Hello, my name is Anthony Barocas, and today I wanted to talk to you about Sony's new 4K camera, the PXW Z150. It's a great little, very capable, compact 4K and HD camcorder. This is nighttime footage. The camera is in full auto and full gain, full iris, and it can't get anything. If I turn on the night shot, now you can see this is the first 4K infrared complete darkness footage I've ever shot. Previously, I've shot standard definition. I have uh, an infrared light that clips on to a Sony camera, Sony camcorder, and it's powered by the camera itself with this hot shoe, but this light does not work on this camera because it, they've changed the shoe in, in the 12, 15 years since this one was made. Um, the camera is shining the light right from above where the microphone comes in. There is a light, I can see two red LED lights, one of which obviously is the tally light, and the second light is the illuminator, which is lighting me up right now. So this is a sample of the 4K footage you can shoot with the Z150 in complete darkness. The camera is reflecting the light through a mirror, that way I can see it, uh, and so it's shooting about mm, five feet, five to seven feet, and it's not terribly bright at that distance, but with the power shoe, you can add on a larger infrared light and shoot in total darkness in 4K. So it is a bright afternoon out here, shooting some leaves in the shade, and trying to see what this little zoom can do. It doesn't seem to feather in and feather out. It kind of starts and stops abruptly. So in terms of being able to do a smooth zoom, you're going to be a little challenged. And right here I'm extending into the clear view area. I'm shooting in 4K. So we will see how well this looks. Step the field is rather narrow. I've got it at F4, minus 3 dB and second ND filter in. And I can rack focus on the servo lens. Here we're at F8. Bring up the gain a little bit because the histogram says I'm a little dark. This is a test of both cameras, detail, and the grass. There's a lot more peaking going on on the Sony than there is on the GH4. Could be set to how each camera does peaking. Each one. So this is a test of both cameras in terms of foreground background separation. Both the cameras are about 10 feet in front of me. The background is about 20 feet behind me. They're both zoomed in. Both of them are actually at f4. That's the minimum aperture on the Sony and it's also the minimum aperture on the Minolta lens I have on my GH4. Now, does the one inch sensor equate to the micro four thirds sensor with a slight crop for 4K? Is the sharpness the same? Is the color profile the same? I'm shooting with um, natural on the GH4 and I'm shooting with standard on the Sony. So these are questions you have to make when assessing whether the camcorder versus a DSLR, DSLR with a larger sensor is going to work for you because if the one inch sensor in the middle of DSLRs and cam other 
camcorders doesn't give you a shallow depth of field, then you might as well go for an even smaller sensor and get more of a zoom range in a given camcorder. So that's been my look at the Sony Z150. It's a cool little 4K, very capable HD camcorder that you don't need an external recorder to get 10-bit 422 in HD. Although I was kind of disappointed that the HD resolutions were limited to 50 megabit and the 4K resolution is limited to 100 megabit. You can find other cameras like the JVC LS300 that give it 150, a little bit more breathing room. Because, I mean, it's 4K after all and you don't know how challenging the image is going to be. Um, it's very convenient. It follows the Sony prosumer camcorder DNA. So if you already have prosumer camcorders, transitioning to this camera and transitioning to 4K is really going to be easy. Two media slots, zoom range, the clear image zoom, you know, all of that is a lot of convenience in a little package. And if you're going to go with a DSLR and you got to add the XLR kit and you got to add a zoom, you know, a servo zoom lens somehow, you know, all that's going to add up and you get all that capability in this nice little prosumer camcorder factor that has a large-ish sensor, but, you know, it's up to you whether it gives you the shallow enough depth of field that you're after. The limitations I was surprised to find are that, that, well, that little menu control, I was really kind of disappointed in the design of it. Sony's usually a lot better in terms of putting little dimples, raising it, so it's easier to feel your way around. I constantly was pushing the wrong button on that, even after several days of using it. And then the limitation on the output. You could either have either the LCD screen or the viewfinder. You could have either HDMI or your HD-SDI, but you couldn't have all four of them. And again, the Sony JVC LS300 for around the same price for the body, doesn't include a bunch of lenses, for the body gives you all four outputs. It gives you, you know, a lot of features, a lot of controls, you know, for a similar price. So if you're looking to get in the 4K, that's something to consider. Although it does not have the integrated servo zoom lens that the Sony has. You know, the 200, LS200 has a servo zoom lens and I have not tested that one to tell how it compares. So, is this camera for you? That's up to you. It's, this camera can be very good in certain corporate situations where you just want to pull it out, you want to shoot, you want to get a good 4K image, and you don't have the need for multiple connected devices, and you don't have a need to dive into the menus a whole lot. This thing is just a shoot and get stuff done kind of camera. If you really want to delve into using a larger sensor and crafting an image, I might choose an even larger sensor camera, like the LS300, which gives you a Super 35 sensor, which is a dramatic, it's even bigger than the Micro Four Thirds cameras, and you can put prime lenses on that, you can put zoom lenses on that, so you get a lot of capability with not a lot of purchase price for the camera. This has been my look at the Sony Z150 4K HD camcorder. My name is Anthony Barocas. Thanks for watching.